dating is a feeling-based experience. Women go out with you because they want to know you. They want to have an experience. If they're going to go intimate with you, they need to know that, that you can be intimate and share with them. You can play with them, you can dance with them, you can have fun with them for real and you're not faking it. And so they're constantly testing to make sure you're not faking it. And that's really important. So in this video, we're going to talk about feeling and why feeling is so important when it comes to dating, getting a woman, having amazing sex, just having an amazing life and growing in general and what feeling really is. We're going to use dating as the example so you can understand this better. On a date, you need to have a feeling based experience. When you go on a date, you're actually going on a date to connect and be intimate with this person in front of you in some way, shape or form, whether it's on a humorous, funny distraction sort of level, like we're just going to let go and laugh a lot, or whether it's on a deep and we're going to tell each other emotional stories. You don't go on a date to be analytical together. Matter of fact, I can't stand, I think of anything more boring and more of a torture for a woman or for me if I was to go on a date with an analytical woman. I go on a date to exchange emotions with the person in front of me. I want to feel their heart. I want to feel the turn on. I want to feel their laughter. I want to feel their, I want them to look into me a little deep and then pull back. I, I don't want to hear about all their analytical diatribe. That's not, that's super boring. This is why so many guys get rejected when they go out to meet women. I'll see a, a group of women sitting together at a bar and they're all just talking away and flowing with all the feelings of the day. And she's talking about what this happened, this person said this to me, and they're, they're really sharing their emotions. Maybe she's sharing some sadness, and some frustration, and some turn on, and said, oh my God, he said this. And here comes the guy, he comes walking up. Hi ladies. And he's clear up here, you know? So uh, I'm, this is gonna be stupid, but who lies more, men or women? And it's just, it, it's, it's not even feeling based. It's all analytical. He's trying to figure out analytically how to get him into a conversation. Okay. Even worse would be if you go on a date and you do that. So, um, in my head, so where are you from? What do you do? Oh, if you, that's what a woman means when it feels like an interview. You're not sharing any real emotion with me, dude. You're not connecting with me. You're not dropping in with me. You're not flowing with me. And that's what really counts. So, Dating is a feeling based experience. It's about sharing emotion. It's about sharing your heart, about sharing your turn on, about sharing your power, about sharing your fears, about sharing all these emotions and feelings. So that takes it a layer deeper. Then, because a lot of nice uh, analytical guys, nice guys are saying, but I feel, what are you talking about? And I used to say that too. I felt a lot as an analytical guy, but I was constantly analyzing all of my feelings. So there was a layer between me and the actual feeling there was a sense that there was i would have the feeling and but i was constantly processing it in the back of my mind worrying thinking doubting judging and then adjusting how i'm going to respond to it so that it sounded perfect it sounded right it sounded i got rid of the tension so i did not insult or bother instead of saying damn you look amazing in those jeans and, and enjoying my body while i said it and just letting her see me feel what i feel I'd say, wow, those jeans are really nice on you. And there's a big difference between those two, especially if I keep talking that way all night long on the date. Where would you like to go to dinner? Okay, let's go to that place. That place sounds good. Or she says, uh, you know, where do you want to go to dinner? And you're like, I don't know, wherever you want to go. Or there's this really good restaurant and I think we should go there, but I got two or three others in case you would like one of those, you know. I, I might be over-exaggerating it a bit, but the point is made. And I used to do that stuff. and. I didn't own anything. I didn't say anything for real. I didn't let her see me have an emotion. And so then the next step became is me faking feel. Like I thought, oh, I gotta have emotion. So I'm gonna dramatize the emotion. I didn't think of it as drama, but you know, I'm sad, so oh, I'm really sad. Or I'm angry, so I'm mad at you. But that's, again, coming from my head. It's an interpretation of a feeling and then saying it to her. And so I'd see guys doing this with stories. They'll tell a story and the story is just this story that it's void or of all the feeling because they're just listing data from the story thinking it'll have an effect or it's over dramatized. Oh, I had this story about my dog, right? You know, and it was a really good story. I, I, I figured out all these stories from my life that were real. I didn't want to lie to people. So I got all these real stories and I sat down and I, 
and I, and I took down uh, each emotion that I could think of and I wrote them down, like sadness, loneliness, first time I felt love, uh, for, uh, the, where I was most inspired, place I most want to go. And I'd write a little note about each one as a reminder of a story. And one of the stories I had was a story about my dog, Brandy, when I was young and when Brandy passed away. And it was a really sad story. And it had a huge emotional impact for me because my mom had given Brandy away a week before she passed away. And we'd had Brandy her whole life. And, and I actually believe that that dog died of loneliness. She didn't know any other family. She was given away and within one week she passed away. And I couldn't believe my mom did that. It broke my heart. And when I found out she died in the middle of the night, my mom, that was the night my mom woke up wanting to get her back. And she called literally the next day saying, I want to get my dog back. And the family said, sorry, she passed away last night. My mom woke up right around 2 a.m. and they said she passed away around 2 a.m. too. So it's, it's freaky stuff, right? And I remember my heart was just broken as a kid. I never got to see Brandy again, tell her I loved her, say goodbye to her. And I resented my mom for that for a while too. And so as I got older, I, that story was kind of stuck in me. It was held back. And when I made these lists of stories, I said, you know what? You know, you, you, there's nothing wrong with sharing a sad story if it comes up in the conversation. So the dogs came up in conversation. And I remember sharing that story with some, some girl. And I remember her reacting really well. And I was like, wow, she really leaned into me when I told that story. This is interesting. And there's more to the story. It goes much deeper. And it can, it, especially that time, it would still pull tears at me. And I remember thinking, wow, this is powerful. So then the next time I went out, I told the story again. But I stopped having the same effect on me. Suddenly I was using it as a tool and I wasn't feeling all the emotions I was feeling anymore. And I noticed the girl looked at me funny and backed away. And I noticed like the next two girls looked at me funny and I had turned that story into a technique and it didn't work like it did the first time because the first time was genuine and real. It was a real story for my life, but I was not congruent with what I was actually feeling. So as I started to realize this, then I started to want to put the emotions back in, but now the emotions are a little dramatic, right? I'm gonna, but I need to feel sad here. So I'm gonna make myself feel sad, they're gonna feel it. And that's bullshit too. People don't like that either, they feel it. You'll get some people to respond to that, but a lot of people won't. So what actual feeling is, is being congruent with your emotional state and letting it register on your face and body, letting people see it, not hiding, it's radically honest radically honest in the details not too much not too little it's that sweet spot in the middle and it comes across when singers sing like you'll hear a really good singer sing and they're just congruent with what they're feeling as they sing the song and it just pulls you in versus a dramatic singer or a singer that's void of emotion it comes across when dancers dance it comes across when somebody says hi and are they genuinely saying hi hi how's your day going versus how's your day going and it has a huge impact on the person in front of you. So dating is a feeling-based experience. Women go out with you because they want to know you. They want to have an experience. If they're going to go intimate with you, they need to know that, that you can be intimate and share with them. You can play with them. You can dance with them. You can have fun with them for real and you're not faking it. And so they're constantly testing to make sure you're not faking it. And that's really important. So feeling also helps with so many other things. Oh, by the way, have you ever seduced a woman by being analytical? Have you ever analyzed her into bed? Have you ever done had analytical conversations, she got turned on and couldn't wait to sleep with you? If anybody says yes, I think you're full of shit because it just doesn't happen. The only case where that will happen is if you are making a deal with an escort or something like that. And other than that, and she's not turned on, she's turned on for the money, if anything. So let that set for a minute. You gotta learn to be more real. You gotta be more of a man. And then think about this. Why did the jocks get the girl? They're more in their bodies, they feel more. Why did the artists get the girl? They're more in their bodies, they feel more. Why do the nerds usually not get the girl? Because they're thinking too much. They're analyzing too much. Their feelings come secondary. Their feelings are processed through a supercomputer called the analytical mind. So if we take this a little deeper, Feeling really helps with a lot of things in life. It helps you to remember. I mean, if you have an emotional impact, if something you're doing 
has a lot of feeling on an emotional impact, you're more likely to remember like learning a foreign language or learning anything, for example. It helps you to uh, create better muscle memory when you're learning a sport. If you're really feeling that sport, you're gonna get it into the body better. But if you're analyzing it, you're gonna be discoordinated, falling down. Try to analytically learn to dance. You're gonna be out of time. But if you just learn to let your body feel the music, you're gonna be in time and so much sexier too. It allows you to have fun which allows other people to have fun with you and not think so much, not process so much from your head, taking away all the fun. It allows you to connect with others, you know, which is basically what I've been saying through this whole video. It allows you to turn a woman on. She's going to get turned on by your heart being open and your turn on being there and enjoying her. And if you're being super analytical, she's not going to feel you. There's no way she can feel you. She can't get turned on by that. This is between saying I'm a sapiosexual, I'm turned on by intelligence and I'm turned on by analytical thinking. You don't hear people say I'm turned on by analytical thinking. You can be intelligent and feeling. There's a whole different animal there. So for people that were gonna say that, it allows the body to heal. Um, if you're not in feeling in your analytical mind, you're actually pulling energy out of parts of the body and the body doesn't heal as well. But the body, body heals much better when you have a much better embodied relationship with the body. This is why embodiment work is so important. That's why we have a whole week long program on learning to feel your body on a deep meditative level, all the emotions and the emotional states for those of you that are really shut off. Now, what has caused this lack of feeling in the world? Because I don't believe we were always like this. I think people felt a lot more in the past. In some ways, we were also weren't as aware, but we also felt more. So it's a weird kind of 50-50. And it has a lot to do with modern society. The world is sped up so much. They say we get more information in a day than we used to get in a year. And all that information, cell phones, is bombarding our, our consciousness. I got two of them here. Jesus. I got my computer. There's billboards everywhere. There's cars. There's people. People used to live in small towns and you know, there weren't, even in big cities, there wasn't as much going on all day. And so the minds were much slower and didn't get bombarded. So over the years, we've built really thick critical minds, critical factors, we used to call them in hypnosis, and it's that part of us that analyzes to deal with all the information. And we have to learn to start feeling again, but at the same time, we got to be careful not to let in a bunch of negative information that doesn't serve us. So that's what the critical factors do, it's trying to process that. As you become more conscious and aware, you'll be able to take care of this, you'll be able to handle this. And so what can you do to start developing feeling more. Well, you can go out and just practice literally feeling. The first thing I'm going to say is if you analytically are thinking about something like this, this paper has, is yellow. If I'm thinking about this paper and I'm looking at it and I'm studying it, I'm analyzing it, the yellow, what does the yellow feel like? What does the yellow feel like? That's me using my mind to focus on it. But if I just sit and enjoy the paper and say, well, how do I feel when I look at this? And I relax and let the paper, there's a sense the paper comes to me, the experience, and I have a visceral experience in the body, or there's a sense I'm studying the paper and trying to understand it. I want the one where it comes to me and I let it in. And I let my body learn. I reveal, I let it, in a sense, it's revealing. I'm just, what does this reveal to me? What else does this reveal to me? And I just explore the body for sensations. Okay. You can do this every day. Go out and look at two colors, red and blue. Take a, a picture of a, a sheet of red and a sheet of blue. How do they feel different to my body? Look at a tree in the distance. Look at a tree up close. How does it feel different to my body? Everything feels different. That's how your body identifies it. And so notice the ways in which your body is opening and closing the chest, the stomach, the, the, the sensations, the warm, the cooling, the tightness in different parts of the body. Uh, when I look at a beautiful woman, versus looking at a man. How does my body feel different? Uh, where do I feel turn on in the body? You know, what turns me on? Look at different things and explore that. Start to really explore the sense of feeling. Massage parts of your body and study it, analyze it, and notice how it feels, and then just sit back and take in all your senses, the whole room, and let the feeling wash over you of the massage. What does it feel like you're just letting it come to you? And as you do this, you're gonna start to develop a very different feeling sense between the two. And this is what I want to invite you into is start to develop this sense of what does it feel like to feel first and then let, and eventually first it's going to be hard, right? If you're not used to it. And then eventually you can let words be put to the feelings versus putting the words, separating the words. Like what we do is we feel something and then we want to and analytically disconnect from it two or three layers and neuter the sentence we were gonna say. Like, you know, you look amazing on those jeans down, your ass is off the charts. And then suddenly it's like, wow, those jeans look really nice on you. 
And what we do is we're avoiding the tension of the honesty of the moment. This is why radical honesty is so important. Getting really radically honest with ourselves is where it starts. What am I really want to say here? Not neutered, not changed, but raw and authentic. Because remember, you have an animal part of yourself that's raw, and it's that's the physical part of yourself. And that part of you, you got to be, you got to have a relationship to. You got to understand it. That's the part of you you eat, sleep, have sex with, and and then a passion with, and you have turn on with. And there's it gives you a, a good enjoyment of the physical world. Then you have a spiritual part of yourself, your heart, which also you need to have a relationship to. And if you have a really good relationship to your heart and your soul, you're not going to lose control of your animal. You need both of them. You need to be able to have both be in balance with each other. And then there's the head. And the head is used for focus. It's for making things happen. Like I'm going that direction. So I'm going to get the spirit and the animal aligned with going that direction, all turned on together. But what happens is we take all that energy that runs through our whole body and we pull it all up into our head. And then we think, 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 and disconnect from our body and think we're gonna run our lives that way. And then we wonder why we're miserable, why we can't get a girl, why we can't turn a girl on, why we can't connect. You can't turn a girl on from that place. You could fall in love from, if you get into the heart, you can fall in love. You still, the sexual turn on is gonna come, uh, part of it's gonna come from the animal, the raw sexual turn on, the love is gonna come from the heart and the focus is gonna come from here. So that's a lot of what we talk about in our workshops, the embodiment and the embodiment workshops and, and other and experiential workshops, because we are body based creatures. We're animal based creatures. We're in a physical world and a body. This is your vehicle to go through the physical world. You need a relationship to it. And especially with women, which is such an emotional feeling based experience. So if you really want to learn to enjoy women and learn to enjoy life, check out our workshops, check out our seminars, the experience and, and so forth. Talk to one of our coaches, but also keep checking out these videos. I give a lot of great information in these videos. I love sharing them and I really want to help you have the most powerful and amazing life ever. That's why I started Fearless many years ago. So I'm going to ask you to like, hit that bell notification and make sure you get all the videos. I don't think our, we're going out to everybody in the news feeds like we used to. So make sure you subscribe to make sure you get these videos so you don't miss any also the like really helps uh helps us to grow and, and be more powerful in the algorithm so we can start getting out there again share because that'll help us to grow and get more of these videos out to you really appreciate that and comment we really love your comments we're constantly responding to your comments it helps us to know what else we need to give you uh as far as videos if there's a video you want don't feel free to put it in the comments if you want to comment on this video and ask a question put it in the comments and we will at some point see it Okay, so I hopefully you enjoyed this video and you have a better understanding of what feeling is. Uh, I might do more on feeling if you guys really want to know more and uh, how it relates to dating, women, sex, and even releasing. So make sure to put any comments in the video about that too if you want to know more about uh, stuff like that in future videos because we want to constantly make what you guys want to hear. So with that said, remember, only the confident really live. See you in the next video.